Previously on The Fallen. Oh crap, we have to go. Looks like they're leaving the station. Oh come on then, Miss Badass. What's the worst thing you've ever done? Okay, so I flooded the toilets at school. Just sort of went in and shoved toilet paper into all the plug holes, turned the taps on and walked back out. They burnt everyone inside. They barred the door and burnt people inside. Those poor people. Uh, uh, right, you got a Scottish soldier car. Up by your fucking boots, lad. This is ending my life. I'll make you choke on the fucking rest of it. He couldn't stay long as a dead had turned to notice him standing in the gateway and, like bloodhounds, picked up his scent. And they were coming for him. Coming for another meal. It took Roach a couple of hours to limp his way up the steep hill of Coburn Street. Shop windows darkened. Signs of doors stating closed due to illness. Shops that would never open again. He thought he might try and break into one for supplies, but there didn't seem to be any shops that would have any use. Shops selling trinkets, t-shirts, jewellery, nothing worth scavenging. Eventually he reached the top and was greeted with a sight that he would wished he had not seen. The Royal Mile was destroyed, and bodies lay scattered everywhere, rotting in the soft rain. Slowly he made his way up the Royal Mile and got to St Giles Cathedral, and a destroyed camp which was set up in the square in front. Torn tents and empty boxes of supplies lay scattered on the street with blood everywhere. He didn't have time to stop or investigate, he had to rendezvous with Pete and Danny. He passed the entrance to Mary King's Close, the doors barricaded with boxes and planks of wood. The statue of David Hume watching over the destruction, rotting corpses lay at his feet, almost ceremonial. Roach shrugged it off as he looked up the hill towards the castle. Past the tourist shops and noticed a large group of infected slowly making their way towards the castle, their groans filling the air as their rotting bodies inched closer. He limped his way along the George IV bridge and eventually reached the large wrought iron gates of Greyfriars Kirkyard. The large gates were open, swaying gently in the wind. A barricade lay across the entrance, thick metal spikes pointing towards the street to prevent any of the dead coming towards it. Beyond the gate he could see the start of a large white tent which stretched through the graveyard like a long white snake, its mouth welcoming Roach. He managed to squeeze past the barricade and into the entrance of the tent, slowly pushing aside the plastic door and entered through. It seemed at one time to be a sterile place. White walls, floors and ceilings now splattered with pools of crimson. Bodies of dead infected scattered on the floor. Bodies of soldiers laying against the wall, rotting. He raised his hand to his nose as he tried to block out the smell and continued through the tent. He reached a junction to where the corridor went right and left or straight ahead into a large room. He turned to his left and opened the plastic doors and entered the room. He was greeted with a large space filled with computers which were now powerless. Blank screens stared back at him. Papers strewn all over the floor. He bent down and picked up one but it was full of words that he couldn't understand. Medical jargon. At the far end of the room he could see a whiteboard with the outline of a body roughly sketched onto it, arrows drawn to different parts of the body. The title on the board read, The Three Stages of Reanimation. Blood was spattered over most of the writing which he couldn't make out, but there was a scribbled paragraph on the bottom of the board which looked to have been written with haste. They turned quickly. Within hours, the team had been infected. I am the only one alive. I can't keep them at bay for long. Things are not as they seem anymore. The writing stopped as the words became illegible. On the ground lay a man with a white lab coat. Bullet holes riddled his back and his face was against the wall. A marker pen lay in his hand and a pool of blood on the ground. Bullet holes in the wall indicated that the scientist was shot, trying to reveal the truth, Roach thought, as he tried to make out some of the words, but there was too much blood. Roach looked down at the body, and inside the chest pocket, he found a voice recorder. He removed it, and press play. Voice entry 51. This is getting ridiculous now. Soldiers are taking over our research, demanding all of our findings. How do they expect us to work like this? <sighs> we have discovered that it only takes an hour for 
more subjects to turn, and it seems that the army are not taking any chances. They seem to be killing people as soon as they have symptoms. I heard Jackie say the other day they locked people inside St. Giles and set on fire. I mean, what the hell is happening? Oh shit, they're uh, uh, locking off. Dr. Monroe, it's over. Give us your research. I wasn't doing anything. No, 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 you can't touch that. No, 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 no. Ah! All it takes an hour. No wonder the city fell so fast. After several minutes of exploring the room and not really finding any more information or anything of use, he left, continuing to the left and along the corridor. The corridor winded, leading to more rooms which contained living quarters, a dining hall and even a morgue, but he found nothing more of use in the tent and continued along the corridor until it led out into the graveyard. The entrance of the tent led out to Greyfriars Kirk, a large church which loomed over several graves, a large dark shadow in the darkness. He looked towards the windows and noticed a dull yellow glow flickering from within. His eyes squinted as he peered towards the stained glass window as he noticed the shadows moving within. With a big sigh, he put his bag over his neck and across his chest and removed Stevenson's rifle from his bag, cocking it and holding it tightly as he slowly jogged towards the door, his footsteps crunching on the wet gravel. As he crept, he slowly placing his back against the door, he heard a familiar voice whispering from within. He gently pushed against the large wooden door and it creaked quietly as he stepped in, and he was greeted with a scene which he could not even begin to imagine. Bodies of infected hung from the rafters by their feet chomping at the air, their rotting hands reaching for roach as he walked down the aisle past the pews. Bodies sat at the pews next to one another, flies gathering over their rotting corpses, their skeletal bodies staring at the front of the church as if watching a silent sermon. At the end of the aisle, Roach could see five people with their backs to him, their torn denim clothing standing in the dull light of the church. They stood behind six people who were on their knees, their sacks over their heads and their hands tied behind them. As he watched on in horror at the scene that played out in front of him, he heard a familiar voice echo through the church. We will find the rest of the survivors from the camp, round them up and we will condemn them for their sins. Cleansing their promulgators, he will then welcome us with open arms. Our ascension is nigh. Let these people go! What are they hoping to achieve? Well, hello to you too. That was a bit rude, was it not? You come into my room. You don't even announce your arrival or say hello. I am. Disappointed. But what else can I expect from a meathead like yourself? So have you come to get your stuff back? You can see that. Oh, where's your friend? Did he not make it? Now that is a shame. No, seriously. I am really sorry to see that he is not with you. As you go on your glory mission to claim back what belongs to you. So what was it? Did he kill himself? Or did somebody else do it? Or did the dead get him? Either way, he got what he deserved, I'm sure. Fuck you. Sorry, I didn't quite hear you. What did you say? I said fuck you! Oh, come on, would you really stoop to such a level to swear in the house of God? I think that deserves a punishment. What would it be? Twenty lashes? Oh no, wait. I have a brilliant idea. Judas went over to one of the people where they were on their knees with a sack over their head. He ripped the sack off to reveal a blood-covered woman, long grey hair tied up into a loose bun. She seemed familiar to Roach, but could not be quite sure. He could hear her muffled sobs as if she had something in her mouth. He raised his pistol to her head and looked straight into Roach's eyes and gave him a smile and pulled the trigger. A bullet exploded out of his gun and tore into the woman's head, sending blood spraying all over the floor of the church as her lifeless body fell back. Then Roach recognised her. Her blood-covered Iron Maiden t-shirt told him it was Allison. She was one of the cooks in Atlantis, was a very kind-hearted soul. As the body hit the floor, 
the sound of sobbing came from the other prisoners. No! Fuck you! Stop! Oh. Is that another one? Okay, if you say so. Go on. I dare. Stop! Stop! Seriously! You know them, don't you? Yes. Sorry? I said it. I said it. Yes. Ah, you know it, boys. Take them long enough. Was you. You but up down in Atlantis. What? No, these people. They came to my door, banging and screaming for sanctuary, pleading for help. And me being the generous person I am, took them in, saved them from their innovative death. Saved them? So they could be their prisoners? But you see, I have a mission of my own. Rope, is it? I am on a mission from God to make sure that the dead consume the living in a way to cleanse the earth so he can start again. And if I succeed, sorry, when I succeed, I will have a place next to him when I ascend. Sorry, you think God has caused all of this as a way to cleanse the human race. It's an illness. Nothing more. The human race are the illness. We are the plague upon this earth, and it is time that the plague is wiped out. Why, and of course, you're the one to do it. You're fucking mental. Stop it! Motherfucker. Roach aimed his rifle at the men that were coming towards him, with knives getting ready to swipe at Roach. Roach put pressure on the trigger and tore down the onslaught, the bullets ripping through their bodies, leaving Judas alone. Roach noticed the fear had become plastered on his face as he realised that he was on his own. Roach fired his rifle into the stomach of Judas, sending him to the ground in a heap, his screams filling the air. He scrambled to his backside, pulling himself closer to the pulpit. Laying his hands on the bottom of a cross which stood against the wall, an effigy of Jesus staring down on proceedings. Through the pain, Judas pulled himself up and leant against the wall, blood covering his jeans and his hand covering the new hole, trying to stop the blood coming out. As Roach approached, his rifle still trained on him, ready to fire should he try anything. Judas coughed, and blood sprayed out of his mouth onto his chin. <coughs> Good. Into your hands. Oh, shut the fuck up! Roach spent some time releasing the prisoners, making sure they were okay, dusting them off and giving them first aid to those who needed it. Food and water. Oh, man. Roach, thank you. Listen. Listen. It was so cold. What was it cold? It was so total. He killed the guards on the gate. All there were allowed to feed in. They didn't tell him for it to fall, to be honest, but then he just buggered off. Don't know where. Twenty of us got out the rest still. You can imagine. Why did he come here? Didn't he? We didn't know where we were going to go. We got to the Royal Wild and a group of people and Giles said they were held up in Mary King's clothes and said they'd take us in. What could go these bastards came along? We tried to fight them off. The ones that got away went with Mary King's lot and we were taken here. Take me there. I need to meet them. Roach helped Kevin and the other prisoners out of the church as they made their way back through the city of the dead to the streets of Edinburgh's past. The Fallen, an Eerie Earth production, written and directed and edited by Kieran Begg, starring Andrew Lodge as Roach, Jake Bamford as Judas, and Chris Begg as Kevin. 
Thank you very much for listening and be sure to head over to eerieearth.com for more on The Fallen. And be sure to follow us on all social media.